So let me start over again. My name is Scott Forehand. <laughs> I forgot to record, folks. My name is Scott Forehand. I'm an agency director here at uh, Symmetry Financial Group, and we're here today to talk about um, debt-free life, a proprietary offering from Symmetry Financial Group. And what we're talking about right this second is um, the average American. And the average American, as you can see on that pie chart in front of you, spends about 40% of their money on taxes, 34% of their money on interest, 3% is what they save for the future, and 23% is what's left over to live on. And when I say live on, I mean pay your mortgage, pay your gas bill, pay your Hulu bill, uh, put gas in your, in, your, um, in your car, put food on the table, that's it. And this was not the way things were supposed to be. So debt-free life is a proprietary system that, we, that came out in May of 2019, and it's something that's offering from Symmetry Financial Group. It uses two key financial concepts in the delivery of our debt elimination program and our wealth accumulation and wealth growth program. And those two key financial concepts are infinite banking, which has been around for a long time, and the concept of a debt snowball, which um, which we sometimes people misconstrue debt stacking with a debt snowball. We'll go into that a little bit later. But what we do here is definitely the true debt snowball. So let's move forward. So uh, this is, this is ha the average American over time, how much money they make. And the average American makes, makes plenty of money over time, about $2 million in their lifetime. The problem is what we talked about earlier, which is they only save about 3%. That 3%, $60,000, if they're accustomed to making $60,000 a year, that's not enough money. And it's certainly not enough to last more than a year or two. And with modern medicine, we're all living longer and longer. And the unfortunate result of the way that we're, we've been taught is we've become reliant on the Social Security Administration system, and we've become reliant on government handouts and things like that, which are, are by no means definitely going to be there when you need them. So we have, each one of us has the opportunity up to age 75, has the opportunity to create one of these programs and start it. It's not too late. So if you're still in that situation where you're under 75, these programs can still be issued um, on you. And uh, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to change that $60,000 that the average American saves into something much larger. And we'll get there in just a second. So this is where you are. And if you've suddenly had the realization that you're not saving enough, you don't have enough money, um, or you've got a lot of debt that's really dragging you down, then these are some of the things that you might have been taught or might have been recommended by a debt counselor or a debt consolidation expert or one of those folks. Work harder, spend less money, save more money, go eat ramen and tuna fish, refinance all your debt, which doesn't make any sense, consolidate all your debt, which really doesn't make any of it go away, or do a debt snowball. And most of the time with that debt snowball they're talking about is really debt stacking where they say, take your highest interest rate thing, pay it off as quickly as possible. And then the money that you are spending on that highest interest rate thing, you can now start spending on the next highest interest rate thing. That's debt stacking people. That is not debt snowballing and it is inefficient. We use debt snowballing here because it's the most efficient way of elimination of debt. So our better way, our proposition, the debt-free life proposition. Again, back to that question, is there, if we could show you a way to eliminate your debt in nine years or less without spending any additional money, would you want to know about it? Would you want to do it? Would you want to try it? And what I found after doing over 100 of these programs in the last year, um, it's not nine years or less. It's really three to 27 years sooner. So if you have a 30-year mortgage, what we're talking about here is getting you out of that mortgage in three to 27 years early, meaning all that money you would have paid on interest. We're going to get, we're going to get you to keep some or most of it and make that money be part of your, your retirement program. So the better way, the debt-free life way. So if you are on the left side of your screen, like I am, you want to be on the right side of your screen. That's where that's the debt free life program, how it works and what it does. We're going to decrease the amount of taxes you pay over time by 40% minus 30 is 10%. What does that really represent? That really represents a 25% reduction in taxes over time. 
we're going to increase the amount of money you have left over at the end of every month from 23% to 33% of your dollar. That's a 10% rise, right? Nope. That's a 43% rise. We're going to increase the amount you, you spend uh, in savings from 3% to 15%. That's a 12% increase, right? Nope. Kyla Granger, that's a 500% increase. And that interest, the amount of interest that you're spending, we're going to significantly reduce that as well. So the idea here is that we want to, we're not changing how much money you spend. That's not our goal here. Our goal is for you to spend the exact same amount of money. We just want you to spend it in a more efficient manner so that you can put that money in a situation where it's going to work for you forever. Right, Mike Cressy? So how do we do that? Well, first off, you have to understand some of the key components here. We, we've already talked about the fact that interest is a killer. Taxes are a killer. We don't save enough money. So we're going to address with our DFL program all of those things. And as I was just saying, one more thing. I keep forgetting. It's been a while since I've done this. Sorry, folks. Um, the 80-20 rule. So in this scenario, um, most of the debt consolidation, debt elimination programs that were before us or other programs that used some form of infinite banking, um, they focused on some, some hard, tangible, known debt. The problem is most of them fail. And most of them fail within a period of time because they don't take into account the emergency. So the program that we have here creates an emergency fund that you will never see. It's there and it's growing and it's cash, but you're not going to see it. And the reason why we don't want you to see it is because we don't want you to get to it easily. We want you, we want to make it difficult for you to pull that money out because as long as that money's in there growing out of sight, out of mind, then it's really, really leveraging your retirement in the long run. So about 80% of the, of the funds is, that we have here, that's going to eliminate your debt. That 20% emergency fund is going to be a compound component that's going to grow your, your long-term um, nest egg. And it's going to be there in an emergency if you have a true emergency. And I'm not talking I need a new jet ski emergency. I mean, a uh, tornado just came through. It's going to be three months for the insurance company to get out and replace your roof. And you need a new roof now. You just dropped the transmission on your car. You need $5,000 to put a new tranny in now. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So. When we compare these programs side by side with other retirement vehicles, one of the things we look at are taxed vehicles like traditional 401ks, um, traditional uh, KIOs, SEPs, um, TSPs, FERS, those kinds of things. Um, other tax deferred uh, vehicles like Roths are, are some of the things we can, we can uh, compare. And then finally, that, that first, the greenest of all the columns that you see here, that's actually the number that you end up with when you do a DFL program. So all three of these numbers are using the last 28 years of average interest return for those programs, for Roths, for SEPs, for KIOs, for 401s, traditional 401s, traditional IRAs, and comparing them to what would have happened if you'd put the same amount of money into a DFL program. And what we came up with uh, using the same numbers, a $10,000 investment, 28 years of compounding at a 7% average compound rate with a 25% tax rate. The numbers don't lie, folks. Math doesn't, math doesn't lie. There is no way in the world uh, you're going to, first off, you're not going to get a 7% return every year, year over year in a traditional 401k. This assumes you never have a down year. That's not going to be the case. In this case, for us, for this, for our DFL program, uh, because we're paying the tax up front, because we're using uh, post tax dollars, because we're paying the tax up front, when we pull the money out, there is no taxable event. And also, the other, other things we do, we, we actually get to a point where we don't actually want to pull the money out. And we'll talk about that in a minute. We're going to take a loan, which, in the same respect, there's, no, there's not going to be any tax on loan. So, when you compare these side by side as a retirement vehicle, um, the glaring lie of a 401k becomes evident uh, and the truth becomes known. And these, these vehicles outshine a 401k. So, if you have any, um, any money in a 401k and you can get to it, you ought to seriously consider. Uh, moving it or transferring it into one of these programs. Get with uh, whoever invited you here and they can help you uh, help you do that. So debt-free life is a three prong, it's a, it's a three-part program. 
and the first part is the maximization phase. And what that means, that's when we're maximizing your growth by eliminating your debt and, and doing a paradigm shift with debt, using debt as the vehicle for you to have this maximized growth. What does that mean? That means we're doing true debt snowballing. Once you pay off that $30 credit card, now the credit card's paid off. Now you put that 30 bucks a month back into your program and then you're paying off this next debt faster and faster and faster and so on. So let's say that you don't have any debt. Let's say you're one of those people that are lucky enough not to have any debt, but you're, you're not ready for retirement yet. Well, then you're in the accumulation phase and you're starting way ahead of the game of everybody else. And the accumulation phase means all that means is that we're looking for a program where we're never gonna have a bad year. We're looking for a program where we're never gonna have a loss. We're looking for a program where I don't have to do anything like a 401. I don't have to do anything to lock in my gain. All I'm going to do is I'm going to sit back, let the program go on autopilot, let it compound. And uh, when I'm ready to take some money, I'm going to take some money. Finally, that distribution. So when I mentioned to you earlier that we're doing uh, elimination of taxes. So the maximization phase is the elimination of interest. The accumulation phase is the, is the maximization of growth and the distribution phase is the elimination of taxes because when I take money from this program, I'm going to take it in a tax exempt manner because I'm either going to take it as a loan or I'm going to take out or I'm going to take the money that I put in there that was principal. Either way, I've, I've either already paid tax on it if it was principal or I'm taking it as a loan where there is no, there is no tax because it's a loan. You don't pay tax on your car loan. You don't pay tax on your mortgage. It's There's no tax on it. So um, one last thing. Right now, you should all be thinking, wait a minute, so I'm going to take a loan? So I got to pay back the loan, right? Well, no. And the reason why is these programs are structured that they're going to get uh, an annual rate of return that and a dividend. And when you combine those two, most of the years, 17 out of 20 years, the actual number amount of money you're going to receive from compounded interest plus a dividend is going to exceed the interest that you paid in the loan that you're paying on the loan which means you're actually paying your loan down which means your program is actually paying the loan down for you now there are um, logical reasons why you want to pay it down um, especially when you're in the maximization phase so you can uh, reach more of those funds to pay the next loan down faster and that's something you should go over with um, with whoever invited you here. Um, but there is a logical reason why you'd want to pay it down. And there's a logical reason why you wouldn't. And finally, that distribution phase, because this, uh, this program is protected by IRS tax code 7702 and being a tax exempt solution, I am not bound and you would not be bound by the IRS restrictions on when you can access your retirement vehicle because technically this is not a retirement vehicle we're using it as one but this is a life insurance product and because it's a life insurance as long as we can maintain that illusion of it being a life insurance product it's not an illusion it really is life insurance then we're going to get to the point where we don't need to worry about whether or not we owe tax on the money we took out and any loan that you pay any loan that you took out, either it's going to get paid off over time just through the normal aggregation of compound interest plus dividend, or when you pass, there's going to be significantly more life insurance in here to pay back whatever loan you have, still leaving a legacy for your family. So as I mentioned, this is not a new program. It's been around for a long time. Walt Disney did it when he started Disney World. Doris Christopher did it. Ray Kroc did it with the first couple of McDonald's he took out. Warren, Warren Buffett still does it to this day with Berkshire Hathaway purchases. So this is not a new concept. It's been around. But if you'll notice, those three people, they all have something in common. They're all very, very wealthy. And that's the that's the trick with this program. It wasn't available to the rest of us, like I said, until May of 2019 in its current iteration. And when we created this, I mentioned there, there's others that have come before us. Um, the, the big three, the, might be, the big six that came before us, they all have an Achilles heel. Um, and what our program did was we identified the Achilles heels of all six of those previous programs. And we put um, pieces in place so that that won't affect this. So we looked at the 10 most common reasons why infinite banking processes failed in the past. And we've, we've eliminated those with this program. 
I'm not going to go into that why, because I don't want to advertise anybody else's inferior program, um, but that's the truth. Okay, so how do we do this? This is what we've been talking about. We're going to pay off your debts fast. We're going to make that money that you would have been using to pay for debt service work for you and work for your retirement. We're going to eliminate taxation or a portion of it. We're going to eliminate interest. We're going to we're going to put this in a situation where you can efficiently use your dollars and make your dollar work for you. So that bank that you put your money in right now, that bank's going to lend your money out seven times before you ever use that dollar. And they're not going to pay you anything for the use of your money. So let's, let's change the game. Let's, let's, uh, let's do a paradigm shift and let's make it so we get to pay ourselves for the use of our dollar that we're going to use over and over and over. And oh, by the way, this is going to leave a massive death benefit for your family, creating generational wealth if you do it correctly. So these are some of the folks that we did very early on back in May, June timeframe. Um, we eliminated 84,000, eliminated 100,000, eliminated $73,000. That's all great. The reality is what I'm seeing these days is I'm seeing hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt eliminated for all the people that do this program. And the nice thing about it is once you start it, it actually works better for you if you add additional debt as you go forward. Pretty cool. All right, next. So this is how you, excuse me, this is how you currently spend money. You make your money, right? Everybody. So whether you're a 1099 or a W2, W4 person or self-employed, you make money and you owe taxes on it. So you make your money and you deposit that money as income into your bank, whether you've paid tax on it now or not, it doesn't really matter. That bank is going to take that money, as I just said, your money, and they're going to make money with your bank with your money over and over and over again. And they're not gonna pay you a thing for the use of your money. And then finally, when it comes time for you to pay your debt, you're gonna stroke a check, you're gonna go into your bill pay system, you're gonna instruct your bank to send money to your debtor or to your creditor. And then your money is gonna move and become their money. And your money's gone forever. And when I mean forever, I mean, if you're really, really nice and super sweet, Jamie Satterfield, they're not going to give you your money back. Your money's gone forever. And there's nothing you can do about it. But there is a better way. Give me an aha, uh -huh, Jamie. Can I get an aha? Uh aha. -huh? Uh -huh. There you go. And the better way is a debt-free life program. So this is what we're this is what this is all about, folks. This is about reusing your dollars over and over and over again and making it work for you. So in this scenario, the same deal is happening right now. You make money. Your money gets deposited as income. It goes into your into your bank, into your checking account, whether it's Wells Fargo, Bank of America, it doesn't really matter. But here's where we have a separation. Here's where the rubber meets the road for this program. I'm going to take that money or some of it, and I'm going to stroke a check for my life insurance policy. Yep, remember what I said? This is all based on a whole life life insurance policy. But this life insurance policy has two very important riders. First one's called a term life rider. And the reason that term life rider is there is because we want to increase the total amount of death benefit so that we can grow cash underneath. Because remember, we said the IRS is looking at this and they want to be able to classify this as an investment. And if they classify this as an investment, the game is over, you lose and you're paying tax on everything. So as long as we can maintain the illusion of this being a life insurance policy and not an investment, then we're fine. We're golden because we're using the third rider, which is paid up addition. So let's talk about this for a second. There's a very specific way we structure these payments so that a portion goes to whole life, a portion goes to term life, and a portion goes to paid up addition. The paid up addition, that's what creates your private bank. That's what's creating your debt-free life bank. That's where that money goes, it's not taxed, it's not taxable, and that's where a majority of the interest that you get and a majority of the dividend you receive is going to be derived. It's going to be derived by how much money you've got in that paid up addition bank. And oh, by the way, remember earlier when I told you there was a 20% emergency fund, that exists in your whole life core policy. Whole life policies build cash value. We don't see it. We don't want to touch it. 
We don't want to go there. We just want to know that it's there in case of an emergency if we really need to get to it. So when I'm spending my, let's say, $1,000, no, let's make it even, when I'm spending my $100 on my life insurance program here, I'm writing one check. It's one policy. It's a single whole life policy with two riders. Once my money hits the carrier, it gets split the three ways I show you, you see on your screen. A portion whole life, a portion term life, and a per portion paid up addition. They are not equal. About 11% is going to, to fund and keep that term life policy, that term life rider active. About 21% is going to that whole life core policy. And about 68% is going to go paid up additions. And by doing it this way, that's my attack chihuahuas in the background. By doing it this way, we're going to get maximal growth and a lot of it. And it's going to be compounded with, with the, uh, the addition of um, the, the dividend that happens every year. And depending on which carrier you use, getting a monthly compound or an annual compound. So what did we do? We diverted our $100 from our checking account, made it so that our bank can't use that money over and over and over again and earn interest with our money. And we've put it up into our bank, our private bank, our DFL bank. And we are now earning interest with our money over and over and over again. All right. So that's how it starts. Now, let's say you get to that point where you've got enough money in your account and you're ready to pay off one of your debts. Let's say you've got a, a $1,000 credit card and you owe, you owe $1,000 on that credit card and you've been paying 100 bucks a month and you've got 10 months left. Or you can simply take a loan from your bank. Operative word here is loan people. We are not taking principal. We're just taking a loan. So we tell the carrier that we want to take a loan against the cash value of our bank. That money gets deposited back into our checking account. We write a check from our bank and to, or tell our bank to pay that debt. And now the debt's paid. Our creditor's happy. They're paid. The debt's paid. But where's our money, Kyla Granger? Where's our money? Our money is still sitting in our bank. It's still sitting there earning interest. It sure is. Getting compounded. And it's still getting, it's still sitting in there creating a dividend for us at the end of every year. So we use somebody else's money to pay off our debt. I'll do that any day of the week, especially when we get this. Remember earlier I said 17 out of 20 years, we're going to earn more interest on the money in our bank than they're going to charge us for the loan against the money that we take out, right? So what does that, what does that really do for us? Well, that's called arbitrage, people. That means we've got positive arbitrage. When you... Uh, when you'd borrow money from your bank to buy your house, did that bank just have three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars sitting in their in their vault to hand you cash? No, they borrowed the money from a larger bank or for the federal federal funds. So they borrowed money and they lent it to you, and they're charging you a much larger interest rate than they're being charged. That's the definition of arbitrage, borrowing money and lending out at a, at a rate where you can make positive cash flow. We're doing the same thing here. 17 out of 20 years, we've got positive cash flow. And that's why it's not a critical thing for us to pay back our loan. Simply by making our payments and doing our debt snowball, the loan's going to get paid off. The dividend's going to pay it off. We're going to pay off our debts in a rapid fashion. We're going to eliminate that long-term interest or at least shorten it. We're going to grow our nest egg. It's going to compound. And in the end, all of our debt's going to get paid off. And we're going to have, we're going to be able to keep most of the cash that used, we used to, to pay off that debt. So if you have a $200,000 mortgage and you're on a 30 year term or 30 year note, and you use one of these functions to pay it off, you're going to pay um, about $490,000 for that home. Okay. If I can eliminate $90,000 of interest, where's that money? It's in your pocket. It's in your retirement. All right. So let's take a look at this and let's see how this works in a live example. So this is a family. I did one of these programs all back in 2019. All right. This is a, a, um, a 36 year old um, man who is a, he's an over the road trucker, owns his own trucking company. 
His wife was at that time a PhD student and had a tremendous amount of, of, um, of debt, student debt. Not only that, they were, they were both married previously. So they had two houses, actually three. Um, they had uh, new cars, um, lots of uh, old tax debt that they're, so you can see on your screen, it was going to take them about 40 years to get to zero. 40 years of making payments on everything they owed to get back to zero. Zero, zero McFadden, zero, right? So what does that mean? Did they owe $584,000? Yes. Did they owe more than that? Absolutely. So with the interest they were going to pay over time, their total debt was $767,000. And when I showed them this screen, they almost uh, the man almost had a heart attack. Couldn't believe his debt was that much. That's the reality. They love giving you student loans and they are evil people. They love giving you credit cards. They are evil. They serve a purpose, but they are evil. With this, we can tell them to go pound sand. This is what we did for them. So without making any more money than they're making right now, without going out and getting jobs, without tightening the belt, without going out and eating ramen all the time, without changing their lifestyle, we were able to reconfigure the way they spent money. And we were able to get them out of debt in 7.8 years. That's 32.2 years faster than where they were. Okay. But here's the, here's the kicker. Saved them $70,000 in interest. That's great. That's a lot of money. I'll take 70 grand if anybody's passing it out. I'll give you my address, mail me the check. But here's what it really did for them. We saved them $70,000. But more importantly, look at that bottom. In 40 years, they would have gotten to zero. Zero, McFadden, they would have gotten to zero. But in this case, they went to 4.8 million liquid simply by changing the way they spend money, simply by changing the way you pay your debts, simply by making their debt work for them instead of against them. And oh, by the way, take a look at that second number. Remember, at its core, these programs are life insurance policies. So not only did it create $4.8 million in liquid wealth for that family, it also created an additional death benefit of about 1.1 million. That's, that's generational wealth. That's the, their grandkids are going to start off with $1.1 million in the bank. Okay. So that's what debt-free life does. That's how it can work. That's the end result. How did we get there? Each one of those yellow rows is a row in which one or more debts were paid off. And I want you to pay careful attention to a couple of numbers. At the end of the first year, row one, policy year one, loan from CV, that's $14,950. End of year balance from CV, that means in that first year, we borrowed $14,900 but we also paid off around 6,000 so that, so that our actual loan at the end of the year was 8,000 and change. We also had an emergency fund of $3,000. Remember that 20% we were talking about? There's your emergency fund. And more importantly, at the end of the year, so get this, we paid off, we bought $14,000 of loan paid a lot of it off, about a third, and we still have $12,000 cash sitting in our program. That's that annual liquidity column all the way to the right. Okay. Althea, you getting this? Yeah. You getting the tinglies? Yeah. Have you had a holy cow moment yet? Well, let's, let's move forward. And here comes your holy cow moment. Look at second year. Second year, we borrowed another 15. Now we've paid it down to, to 8,000. The cash value of our program with it, with with the emergency fund is now forty thousand. So not only did we pay off another fifteen thousand dollars in debt, we now have forty thousand dollars sitting in our cash account. Did you, was that a holy cow moment for you? Yep. Okay. Okay. Here comes another one. Year three. So year three, now we paid off fifty eight thousand dollars in that one year. And at the end of the year, we still have $30,000 sitting in there. Now, so I like to use another word, but since we're recording this, I'm not going to say it. This is another holy bleep moment. Year four is a holy bleep moment. 
So I want to paint this picture. We're going to go into this in just a minute. But that fourth year, we've got $91,000 sitting in our account. Okay. I, I'd like $91,000 sitting in an account. You know, what can you do with 91 grand? Well, in this case, you shouldn't touch it until you're debt free. Or you can leverage it and make it work for you. What would happen, Althea, if you owed $210,000 on a mortgage and all of a sudden you showed up at the bank and said, hey, I'd like to pay $91,000 of principal? After the teller had the heart attack and they replaced that teller, they would say, okay, you just accelerated yourself from your 30-year mortgage down to a six-year mortgage, especially if you do it again. Look at year seven. And year seven, I've paid off a lot more debt and now I've got 122000 you think that's enough? Yeah. So in year in year eight, which is really year seven point two, in year eight we're taking out one hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. We are placing it down and paying off. In this case, for this particular family, they actually paid off two mortgages in that one year because they own two houses. And then boom! Not only is their mortgage paid and all their debts paid. They got $75,000 cash still sitting in the bank. Can I get an amen? How about a hallelujah? Any, either one of those is fine. So moving forward, yes, we have a debt. See year nine, the, the EOI loan balance from cash value. At the end of year nine, I still owe $117,000, right? But I've got $175,000 in my account. In year 10, just through the course of doing my debt snowball with my compounded interest, with my dividend, in year 10, the remaining balance of $54,000 is paid off so that in year 11, I start the year with zero. I don't know what dime in year 11. So this guy's 36 years old. He was on track to have zero in 40 years. And we got him out of debt and 375,000 to the good in 11 years. Can I get an amen now? Okay, there you go. So I want you to pay particular attention to one more thing. This guy told me he owns his own trucking company. He's gonna run it into the ground or he's gonna sell it at some point. He said, I just wanna to get to the point where I got a million dollars cash and then I'll be ready to retire. I'll probably be around somewhere around 70 years old, 75 years old. Where'd we do it? age 52. So I got him retired 18 years early. I'm okay with that. I got him retired younger than I am right now. Okay. So um, if he went to where he was retiring at age 75, look at this, this program stops at age 75, no more premiums, not paying a dime. And at that point, We've got a death benefit of $3.3 million that's fully paid up. And holy cow, we've got $5 million in cash on top of that. All right, so this is not magic, people. This is just math. Math doesn't lie. All right, so show you one more example. Let's say you've got somebody who doesn't have a mortgage. So this is a 23-year-old college student that I met with who was working on her master's program and owed at that time uh, $85,000 in debt through the course of her car loan, student loans, a couple credit cards. She's got a cat that's very sick that she keeps taking to the, hospital, to, the, to the emergency vet. So she's got these debts built up, right? So for her, because of the student loan, it's going to be 40 years for her to get debt free. Her real debt is not 85,000, it's 177. She owes more interest than she owes on principal. Okay, that's the dirty, nasty secret about student loans. They are evil. I'm gonna pound that drum until I, until I croak. Okay, so what we did for her was instead of getting her out of debt at 40, uh, age, uh, 40 years from now at age 63, man, I've got t-shirts older than her. We got her out of debt in 9.7 years. So all of her schooling is paid for, and we saved her $64,000 in interest. We saved two thirds of the interest she was gonna pay over time. Now look, this is a, this is, she works as a waitress, okay? 
that's her only source of income while she's in school. And this program was a $300 a month program for her, which she agreed and was going to do because she saw the value of this. This is her investing in her future. So we saved her $64,000 of interest, which is going right into her, um, into her retirement. But let me ask you this. Do you think a 23-year-old master's student is only going to make what she's making right now the rest of her life? You think she's going to get a raise at some point? Absolutely. Okay. The beauty of this program is there's, there's room for extra. Okay, because we build in room for extra. This is a tax shelter if you do it right. So got her out of debt, 9.7 years. She'll graduate with her doctorate in three years. So in three years, she'll have a doctorate fully paid. She'll probably be making six figures, maybe maybe high six figures, depending unless she goes to teach. Um, but here's the deal. In 40 years where she would have been, she would have been back to where, um, McFadden? Back to zero, right? She would have been back to zero. But in this case, she's back to zero plus. She's got $603,000 liquid sitting in her bank. That's assuming she never gets a raise and never overfunds it. And all she ever does is her $300 a month program. And more importantly, the legacy. So her legacy, this is over a $400,000 fully paid up life insurance policy. It's crazy. Works like a charm. Yellow lines. Debts, they, a year where they paid off at least one debt. Okay. So that's the end of this um, debt-free life presentation. So if you were invited here and this is something that interests you, which I can't imagine that it wouldn't, get with whoever invited you and, and talk to them about it. Um, if you're an agent, hopefully this helps you um, and you can use some of what I talked about today and use for presentations to your clients. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, typically, these things run in three parts and we're on track. So I'm going to add, I'm going to show you guys one more thing. I typically try to show you an advanced market topic. And so today's topic is, which one did I choose? There you go. How do you fund these DFL programs? Okay. For those of you that have a mortgage, cheers. For those of you that have a mortgage, this is actually one of my clients. So you pay principal interest taxes and insurance, PITI. Your principal and interest you have to pay, that's your base mortgage payment. As long as it's not an FHA loan or a VA loan, if it's a conventional loan, the taxes and insurance payment are optional. You do not have to let your bank hold those funds in escrow for you and pay your homeowner's insurance and your property taxes on your behalf. You can do it yourself. So let me ask you this. If you had the option to do that, why in the world would you give money to an entity, let it hold for you, let it make money with your money, make interest with your money, and then eventually pay for you a debt that you're going to be paying anyway. The only benefit you get out of that is you have to, you don't have to write that check. They're going to write the check for you. That's it. So is, is it worth it to not write a check? And I think in just a minute, you're going to have a holy cow moment, Althea. We're back to holy cows. Okay. We'll get to the holy four le other four letter word later. Here's your holy cow moment. This is an actual interest. This is an actual PITI payment for one of my clients, $888 in interest. This is a 30 year mortgage. That's the first month of premium, $888, $300 in principal, $168 going to tax escrow, $310 going to insurance escrow. Okay, so that 168 plus 310 means he's paying $478 a month to escrow that his lender is holding and making interest with and not giving him a penny of that money. So at the end of the year, you've paid them $5,736. Althea, if I gave you $5,736 and say, hey, hold this for me for a year, and then I'm going to ask for it in a year, would you do that? Especially if you could put it into a bank, even, even if you just go to and get a CD and earn 2.5%. That's like me giving you giving you three or four hundred dollars. In this case, two hundred and twenty nine dollars, four percent. Okay. 
the reason why I'm using 4% here, people, is because that's the guaranteed interest rate that we have with this program. If you put that money into your program, regardless of what carrier you go with, it's a minimum of a 4% return every year, plus a dividend on top of that. So, Althea, if you're walking down the street and you see $229 sitting in the gutter, are you going to pick up the money? Or are you going to walk it over and say, I guess somebody lost their money? Yeah, that's I going to my pocket, right? Money. Your pocket too, right? Stock. Yeah, man. Pick up the money. <laughs> Right. Look around, see if anybody sees you pick it up, but pick up the money. OK. Right. So let's look at this. Here's how the numbers actually work. Ready? Get your holy cow ready, Althea. In the first year of the program, because you don't have any compounding going on and you don't have any dividend, you actually lose forty five dollars. OK. So it actually cost you two hundred and seventy four dollars in the first year of interest. Okay. The second year, now I've got my first year numbers tacked onto my second year numbers. So now I've got $11,893 gaining interest for me. So my second year, I turn a profit, 195. My third year, now my profit's getting good. You let me know when. I'm just going to keep scrolling. You tell me when it's a holy cow moment for you, Althea. I'm watching. There yet? Nope. There yet? Yeah, is that a holy cow moment? Wait, it gets better. This is the compound effect. Einstein said it. There's nothing more powerful in this universe than the effect of compound interest, right? So I want you to look at that. See that last number, 44.95, right? The next year, it's going to be over 5,000. So in year 16, simply by me paying my money into my DFL program as opposed to paying it into escrow, right? This, these two, two things here, the print, the, the taxes and the interest, I'm going to pay that for as long as I own the house. The mortgage is going to go away, but the taxes and the interest are going to be there forever, right? What did I do? I made my money work for me forever. And oh, by the way, that $119,000 that's in there, guess what? When I take the loan to pay the taxes and escrow, the taxes and insurance, where's my money? It's still sitting in the program. Doesn't ever go away, right? That's on top of whatever else I'm putting into this program. So in year 16, the program just on the taxes and insurance that I've been putting in, the program actually self funds and pays my taxes and insurance escrow for the rest of my life, for as long as I own that house. Is that a holy cow moment or is that a holy four letter word moment? Okay. So that's one method that we can use to fund these DFL programs. And one of the things I said at conference last week, one of the other things could be, let's say you've got um, child support. You know, you're paying, stroking a check, $1,000 a month for child support, right? Stroke the check and put it in your bank. Pull the money out as a loan, pay the child support. The end result is the child support's paid, but you get to keep the money forever and make it work for you forever. Okay? You know, I've got a guy that comes and does my lawn. Do I, do I escrow that 60 bucks for him? No, but I could. I could put all my monthly expenses up into here and then pull it all right back out as a loan and have that money work for me forever. So if you want to retire early, Althea, here's your nugget. Your nugget is start running everything you do in here. Start building one of these programs for yourself. And you'll be able to retire probably 15 or 20 years earlier than you anticipated. All right. So now we have a few minutes left. We're at 625. I've got about 20 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and check the chat, see if anybody's got any questions. Got some birthday wishes in there. Uh, Hannon's here. Are we going to record this? Thank you, Brian McFadden. Um, okay. Yeah, Bonnie, welcome to the party. So I'm going to open it up for questions. If anybody's got any questions, this is the Q&A portion of our um, place here. So first one up, whoever speaks first, ask the question, or else we're going to, we're going to make Jamie Satterfield ask. All right, baby. Bird, let's hear it. So at what point, um, let's just say that you have, um, I don't know, five different student loans, you know, yep. this, 
This isn't my Does sound familiar, Jamie Satterfield? <laughs> so at, at what point, you know, there it's all one student loan, but it's consolidated into, you know, or was it actually consolidated or is it yeah. five separate pieces? Five separate pieces. So Perfect. Yeah, don't consolidate student loans. Right. So at what point, um, you know, when you get your DFL rolling, would you take out a loan to pay off one of the five or would you take it, wait for it to grow to pay off all five? Nope. Of them? You're going to do a piecemeal because the, the, when you pay off that one piece, that one, it's probably not equal fifths. Okay. But whatever that first one is, whatever the smallest one is, that's going to, that's going to cause your, your snowball to start. Because remember, this is two parts. It's infinite banking plus debt snowballing. The, the whole the whole goal, if you've got debt, the whole goal is to get the largest debt snowball you can get started the fastest so that you can make your debt work for you. So in your scenario with the student loans, get the smallest one first. The interest rate's irrelevant. Get the smallest one first to start your start your snowball. And then, you know, you're, we're paying $5,000 for access to the DMA software, right? Use it. It's going to, there's only one best way. Use it. Use the software. It'll tell you which order to pay them off, but you have to separate that out. You can't put that, you know, $150,000 student loan that's five parts. You have to put each part in there. Okay. When you're doing your DMA. Got it. Right. All right. Good. All right. Anybody else? Come on, McFadden. Are you a master at this yet? Weren't you at the same? Weren't you in the same class as me? No, you're a couple classes ahead of me. I went to July. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, one of my clients is on, and she gave me permission to use her as an example. So my client got COVID. My client, I'm going to embellish this a little bit. My client was unable to work for a period of time, but had $25,000 built up into her account. So not only did she take out that $25,000 and pay off all of her debt, she also used this as a living piece. So that's another concept you can use for this. This is, uh, for lack of a better term, this is an unemployment insurance policy that you don't have to apply for an insurance and uninsurance uh, unemployment insurance for you don't have to prove that you went out and made six applications or whatever the rule is okay and you can use this as a private bank over and over and over again mike cressy you're on my screen do you have a question oh um yeah excuse the no video i'm actually driving to an appointment this is a, a rhetorical question but who would not want to do a DFL program? Right. And the only people I find that don't want to do this um, are people that really don't get it. Uh, and that's as an agent, that's your responsibility to explain it in a manner that they grasp. And um, I find that um, doing the, the bank analogy and how the, how the, you know, the current Wells Fargo bank of America is using your money and not, not, not giving you any of that piece of that action is a good way. Um, I also find that, you know, we all have those debts that we're paying every month and we wish they'd go away. And we think, okay, I'm going to pay a little bit more on this credit card, a little bit more on that one. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's certainly not efficient. And that's what this is about. This is about efficiently spending your money and putting yourself in a situation where your money is going to work better for, uh, for you forever. All right. Anybody else? How do you how do you find the, uh, the 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 cash value or the loanable amount amount that's built up in your DFL? Is that through the agent portal or the client? So uh, it depends on what carrier you're with. If you're with uh, Foresters, you have to actually call them up and ask them. If you're with Mutual Trust, um, you have a dashboard that you can go to and log in, and it'll, there'll be a place on there. Um, it should be on the left side of the screen, about halfway down, that shows you the cash value column. As an agent writing these, you have a different access through Mutual Trust, and you can see it on that end as well. Um, Lafayette is um, uh, Lafayette. You have to call. They don't have a a, a client portal yet that's uh, efficiently showing this information. Okay. Anybody else? Hey, Scott, just a, just a side note on that, though. 
Uh, but Foresters did announce that um, it should yep. be this coming month, February, that uh, that should be changing. They are they are changing their client portal. Yep. I yep. I talked to. Doesn't matter. Yes, I know. They, they've um, we've been talking about that for about four months with them, and they they get it. They understand now. So now that symmetries come to their table, um, they get it. My question, else? yeah, Please. Um, between the three that have options, um, can you explain which ones compound differently, the three sure. different? All right, so Lafayette and Foresters compound annually. Mutual Trust compounds monthly. They all guarantee a 4% return, but the difference is if you look at a, a portion of 4% on a monthly compound, one twelfth of four percent. If you do that and then add in the monthly compound, the monthly compound program actually comes out to four point three eight percent return. So it comes out higher because of the compound of the compound because you're compounding every month, as opposed to just an annual compound. Uh, in addition, um, when you take a loan, uh, the carriers are going to charge you loan interest up front um, on a monthly compounded program. If you pay your loan off early, then they credit you back on a prorated basis, the interest that they charged you up front. So if you took a loan from a Forester's program, for example, um, let's say the interest was $500, they'll charge you 500 up front. And if you pay the loan off early, they'll, th they'll say thank you very much. And if you did it with mutual trust and you paid it off six months early, then they're gonna credit you back $250. So, but there, there's, there's lots of pros and cons for all the carriers. They all have their niche. Um, and I, I certainly have my favorite for different reasons, but, um, but I don't, I, the, the purpose of this program, this, this presentation tonight is not to help you choose who to, who to use. That's a, that's a different teaching event. Okay. Anybody else? Hey, Scott. Tommy D, happy birthday. Thank you, bud. Appreciate that. Sorry, sorry, I'm late. I uh, I got a call right as I was getting onto Zoom that I had to take care of. Hey, um, I just wanted to kind of report back. Um, I got my first family that they're um, they're ready to they're, they're in a position where they can begin to pay off credit cards. Right on. And and we got onto the portal. Yeah, I, I mean, and kind of like here's how the portal works. This happened to be with Lafayette, um, and and they they've got a pretty solid portal. And uh, here's how the portal works, and here's how you do this, and here's how you do that. Ah, just, very good. So Lafayette's portal is up then. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I was on it okay. just two days ago, yesterday or two Excellent. days ago. Just the excitement that they had at right. seeing, like, this is this is actually going to work. Yeah. You know, the 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 belief. It was so much fun to 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 as we talked, their their excitement level kept raising, right. and. Um, just, just to, for them to begin to see that, you know, a, a light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. So um, I just wanted to let you know that it was, um, right on. It was a lot of fun. So. Well, congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. And I think one of my clients that's on here actually paid off all of her debt with the exception of her home. And we're going to be mortgage chunking here shortly on that. So, okay. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Good, good, good. First year. Good on. And the other call that came in while I was waiting to get back on was my son who um, we did a DFL on him and his, his wife just changed from being a nurse at the hospital in Pittsburgh to being a traveling nurse, making three times what they were paying her at the hospital. I said, and what are we going to do with all this money? And he said, buy GameStop. I said, besides buy GameStop stock, I said, I said, no, we're going to get a DFL going on her. So it's because uh, she's got some nursing loans that she knows Perfect. still needs to take care Perfect. of. So it's exciting. Well done, sir. Okay. Anybody hey, else? Scott. Yep. Scott, I want to I want to throw a tip out there that uh, that you mentioned in the breakout session. Um, for anyone that wasn't uh, fortunate enough to be in that breakout session. And this is something even like to the eight, um, especially it's like to the agents out here where Scott was using the example about, um, you know, for people that have a child support payment or a set monthly payment for any agents out there. If you have a 
a certain marketing or leads bill that you have every single month. What a what a great way to not only be able to make have your money keep making you money, still be a write off, and still and then also Scott um mention what you said about the um Taxes. in the breakout session about yeah about being able to um right. Uh, for life insurance policy for a key oh, uh, that's a, executive. Yeah, that's, a, that's an advanced stuff. I don't want to muddy the water here, but there's a way you can make these programs tax deductible um, if you're using it in a business scenario and it's specific to IRS tax code 160. Um, but the other thing I want to say, and this is for every agent on this, on this call, every one of us, we have to pay, we're 1099s. So we have to pay a lot of tax. And in theory, we should be paying quarterly. Well, if I can put my the tax I'm going to have rather than putting it in an envelope and then, you know, putting the depositing the money from the envelope into my checking account and writing a check to the IRS, put it in my DFL and take a loan. Let it capture that tax money forever. Right. Okay. And one one comment about that, Scott, it is, it is important that we stay on top of our taxes as 1099s. Um, the one thing you need to make sure of uh, more than anything else is that you you make sure that you have in your, you've given to the IRS by the end of the year, by December 31st, at least as much as you your total tax bill was the year before. Um, they, if, if you do that, even if you're a little bit behind on your taxes, you're, you know, you, you, you didn't pay enough to cover the year they can't hit you with a very stiff penalty because you at least covered what your tax bill was last year. I'm not a tax accountant, not a CPA, not a lawyer, but what, what Scott's saying is right, is, is we need to make sure our tax bill is paid by the end of the year. Um, and why give the government a loan for anything more than you have to when you can be you can be making money on it yourself. So, All right, and excellent. All right, folks, um, any last minute questions, do it now, or we're going to stop a little bit early and get ready for the advanced markets here in about 20 minutes. Going once, going twice. Have a nice night. Good luck, everybody.